You may fire when ready. What? <laughs> We got uh, we got Mark Latell on with us, and I believe uh, Pete. Give me a nod if you can hear him. Um, Mark, the the, <laughs> the story you posted tonight about um, I believe it was 1991, uh, a good old right. fashioned good old fashioned brawl. Um, we have a right. lot of pe- <laughs> we have a lot of people on here watching. So uh, if you'd like to share this live with some of the listeners right now, I think it's great. <clears throat> and um, I'm probably going to force you to revisit my favorite story uh, of all time. <laughs> um, <whatever. laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah, so if you want to, uh, please just walk us through that because that was uh, the best thing I've read. Ba- baseball related, <clears throat> that's the best thing I've read in like two months. Well, anyway, the, uh, but I was coaching with uh, Boach. I was his pitching coach out in uh, High Desert. And uh, that's in the California League. And uh, Bruce Bochy was the manager. I was pitching coach, like I said. And uh, we were playing the Dodgers and uh, Bakersfield team. Well, we would end up having nine guys eventually go into the big leagues, and the Dodgers had eight. But unfortunately, they ended up having uh, two Hall of Famers off of that team as well. And Hershiser and, uh, uh, and, and a couple other guys were pretty close as well. So you, you figure that out, uh, what the matchups were like. Right. And uh, it was pretty tight. Man, High, Dever, High Desert, that was their very first year as a team. It was out in the middle of the desert. Uh, there was a bunch of desert rat people out there, you know, and, and ladies with a whole, whole lot of tattoos and stuff like that, all kinds of shit. But <laughs> we were playing uh, Bakersfield, and uh, Pedro Martino was the starting pitcher. And uh, my, my guys got on the line the other day, and they started chirping. And then, so I, I chimed in, and Ray Holbert, who was the shortstop, he, he got five years in the big leagues. He, uh, uh, Mar- uh, Pedro threw at him twice, and I said, "Well, that's a bunch of shit." So anyway, <laughs> we uh, we had a wild ass left hander out there that didn't know where the ball was going, so I could get away with murder that night. And uh, so he gets knocked down. The next inning comes up, and the guy that was throwing the fingers down, which was uh, uh, Mike Piazza, was the catcher. So Piazza's back there throwing the fingers down, and I said, "Well, that, that's the guy you want to go after right there." So anyway, anyway, we got guys on first and second, and it didn't matter if we drill him because we got the bases loaded, double plays in order anyway, so it doesn't matter. So my guy's going to hit him in the side somewhere. Unfortunately, uh, Billy Badass goes out there and uh, his fastball kind of veered upward and uh, into the guy's noggin, and it uh, it pretty much uh, wiped uh, Piazza out, and he was sitting there in front of the plate for about 30 seconds, you know, cold as a wedge. And uh, so both, <laughs> both, 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 both just came to the top step and put their spikes right in the dirt and held their ground uh, while everybody's looking at Piazza and the and the Blue Boy trainer from uh, Bakersfield's over there trying to revive him. Well, he, he he rattles around eventually. I mean, he was cold though, and uh, he just kind of gets up and jerks and you know, where's the fight? And there's no fight right now. So, <laughs> and so you know, Bochi's out there and he's. He's fanning the fire. He's pissed anyway. And uh, he, he's saying, well, hell, we should hit the son of a bitch anyway, probably. <laughs> and, uh, of course, that, we can get away with that back then and uh, because they already throwing it at Ray. And uh, so, anyway, uh, everything gets calmed down after four or five minutes. And Tommy Byers was the manager. And everybody got back in their dugout. And I'm sure Tommy Byers, because I knew him, he, I'm sure he said to uh, everybody on the bench, which – I mean, everybody, because both bullpens had cleared to the bench. Now, they were, the bullpens were empty. They were all in the dugout expecting <laughs> whatever. To, and uh, and uh, we didn't expect it to happen, actually. We expected it to be a normal game, but uh, Billy Billy winds up, and uh, he, he, let the, he throws a curveball to this Latino second baseman, and uh, he, he drills the guy. Well, the, the guy looks in the dugout at Tommy. We've got, you know, 5,000 people in, in a high-A ballpark. It's packed that night. And he, he doesn't know what to do, so he he, he, uh, he grips the bat up on the uh, brand, and he looks uh, he looks uh, at Tommy, he looks out at Bill, and he throws the bat down, and the fight starts. And uh, it just kept on going for, you know, a pretty good time. But, you know, you had everybody 
Hell, you had you had the cops coming out of the stands, even you know, on their little broomstick horses out there. You know, the, you know, the, the des- desert rat cops, and you know, they were all they didn't know what to do. You know, stay stay off the field and stay out of the way uh, where they get hurt. You know, because uh, we we didn't matter if a fan ever goes onto a field. You know, everybody redirects to the fan. By the way, <laughs> they stop the they stop the real fight and redirect to whoever's out there in the wrong uniform or no uniform for that matter. So that's exactly what happened. And, you know, it was pretty fun, you know, I mean, that's that's a normal fight back then. And, you know, so everybody got their licks in and punches in and everybody went back to normal. Mark's probably got more stories than what we've got hours left in a day, but, um, (laughs) uh, Mark, uh, one of the things that, uh, I know I had talking to you on a previous show that I thought was hilarious and I still think about it from time to time is uh, uh, tell us the lessons about uh, uh, blowing up a tree stump because this is one of my personal things. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, about my character, you know, I was kind of a redneck and still am, I guess, to a degree. I'm a common cultured though now. You know, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> so I'm a cultured redneck. I even go to symphonies once in a while and say, what the hell is this? <laughs> but anyway, uh, my dad, uh, I was 15. My brother was 14. Eric caught me. He played Mississippi State. And he got drafted twice as a catcher. And uh, my dad, we we did everything we could for about three days to win him over to let us drive up. At, you know, we, I was driving at 15 out in the middle of nowhere in Missouri to, to blow these the, to blow this one stump up because we had been on on point with him for blowing stumps for about three weeks at the point, and we actually wanted to blow one by ourselves. You know, to showing that we were. You know, that kind of, we were the right kind of guy to do this. And so he finally says, uh, he, he finally breaks down and says to us, he says, I'll let you guys blow that stuff if you do one thing, anything, Dad, anything. Once you light the fuse, you don't go back and cut the fuse for any reason. No problem. No problem, Dad. That's fine. And he was a Korean war And uh, he got shot all the hell, so he was already pissed off. <laughs> but the, the funny thing was, is we, we had all of our stuff, uh, you know, loaded up in the truck and we were driving up to Tallapoosey, Missouri, which was 10 miles. And my grandmother lived up there, my mama, Sally. And so Eric and I went and raided the kitchen before we went out to blow the stump. And then we had, uh, we had a case of dynamite and it was about three quarters full. And, uh, we called them turds when we put them down the hole. We, you know, we, 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 he said to put 12 turds down the hole. And so we, uh, we ended up, Eric and I looked at that stuff, it was big old old stuff, and we both agreed and said, you know what, it's probably going to need about six more. So we had a six, 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 and we had a devil's load in there. And uh, <laughs> all this stuff. So we angled it in right and packed it in right, and you know, we had the uh, the orange cord, and, and uh, we had it all set and put the cap on. That's real kind of touching thing, right? You know, you don't want to tap that cap too hard. It could go off. So we set it, and uh, we had a, I had a old, big old international truck. It was like a tank. And, uh, so Eric, uh, I said, Hey, fire in the hole. You ready? He said, I'm ready. So I lit it and I jumped in the truck and we parked the truck right next to the stop about 10, 12 feet from the stump. And we didn't move it before I lit it. So I light it. I get in the truck, the truck starts. I put it in the gear. I go forward, go backwards, forward. We're stuck. So the truck dad said not to cut the, to cut the cord. So we said, Hey, we got to go. So anyway, we'd leave the truck by our stump with this, everything lit, you know, so it's going to go off in about five minutes cause you put a five minute fuse on there. So we're out there waiting and we're not worrying about dad right now, but when it went off, you know, the truck was between my brother and I, and all we remember was the first thing was glass blew out first. And we, we felt the earth actually rumble you know, <laughs> and jiggle for a little bit. And then it went to, it was like a movie. It was that flew like a movie. I mean, it must have flew 100 feet in the air. And, and we got we got the sand and dirt and, and some wood chips on us out, 50 yards out. And uh, it blew all the windows out. And, and we didn't want to see, we were kind of interested to see what it did to the truck on the uh, driver's side where it was parked. And it just, pretty much annihilated the whole side. But uh, there was about a five and a half foot hole there and about 15 feet across. And, 
you, you, you couldn't even get in the truck. And the store, you know, it was it was jammed. The block was jammed on that side. And so we finally got it unstuck, drove out of there. Did not. We had no windows to drive home in, so we were eating bugs all the way back. And so, you know, you know, we get back to the house and. Our dad was never in the shop, but he was this day for some stupid reason. And so I'm saying, oh, my gosh, there's dad. And so I drive in on the good side, and it looks like all this glass has been windexed. You know, but there's no glass. It's that clear, you know. <laughs> Man, that, was, that glass was really good. Well, there ain't no glass. <laughs> so my brother gets out. He's got a smart ass. <laughs> He's kind of, he knew, I, he knew it was my ass in the first place. <laughs> because I'm the guy who lit it and everything else. And so anyway, Eric Dad said, how'd, how'd it go for you guys? Did you get that, get that stump blowing? And Eric said, we sure did. And I'm <laughs> back, back in the seat, and I'm trying to kick out my door so I can get a run and start from, from Dad coming after me. <laughs> I mean, tell you the truth, man, I got my ass kicked. Oh, my well, God. We, had a new truck. we got a new truck out of it, though, a 327 engine with a Chevy, and so that was – Paul asked really good, and it was a date truck when I was 16, so there you go. Oh, yeah, that, that's, that would come in handy. Now, I don't know how insurance worked uh, then or if they cover dynamite. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> well, he called him Sody Hampton, and Sody Hampton said, yeah, I, I can get How'd you say, he, how'd say uh, that truck was uh, annihilated? And he said, well, Mark pretty much blew it up. <laughs> he said, how'd he say? He said he had 12 sticks for dynamite. We didn't tell him we had the other six oh, sticks Jesus. in there. Okay. You ever, did you ever find out? Nope. Okay. <laughs> we didn't want that to happen either. Yeah. Yeah, I don't blame you, you know, for that. <laughs> hey, 18 sticks of dynamite, you know, under a big stump, that, that does some serious damage. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's like, is it 15 feet across five five feet deep that's a that's a crater impact i think <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 mark i didn't want to i don't want to take up too much of your time here tonight but i do want to um i do want and please uh uh Please, I hope you grant this request because this is my absolute all-time favorite i've repeated the story and i, I cannot repeat it oh. like you uh, the chap mm-hmm. it was a chapter in one of your books, and I, if I'm not mistaken, now I'm going to screw it up. I think it was on the on the eighth day God created baseball. I could I could be wrong about the book. Uh, Made got, baseball, yeah. Made, okay. Made baseball. Okay, no. great. Uh, the chapter was "Mistake by the Lake." Granny gets cold mm-hmm. cocked. Granny gets cold cocked. Right. My yeah. That's why I'm not older. Well, you know that was kind of interesting because mm, Cleveland, you know. Back in, back in the day, in the, in the old municipal stadium, it, it seated 90-plus thousand. And we used to go in there where they had 8,000, and nobody wanted to play in Cleveland anyway or go to a ball game. But you, you'd see uh, 8,000 people in there during during uh, batting practice, and you say, Jesus Christ, there's a bunch, bunch of ants in here, you know, because it was just, like, scattered. So anyway, when the game started, you know, it was just still scattered. But twice a year, they had uh, – they had where they packed the stadium. They had 60,000 plus and they would uh, give cars away every inning. So you had all these fans come out of the woodwork, you know, in Cleveland and, you know, Cleveland was uh, the, the river burned down there for one thing. You know, I asked the cab driver when I came in one time, uh, I flew into Cleveland and uh, was to meet the club. And so I take the cab and we're going over the right about that time we're, going over that river right there. And uh, I said, so what's so hot about the Cleveland here? He said, well, uh, we we got a river. Matter of fact, this is the river where it burns, you know. There there might be a fire on it right now. I said, well, that's really good. It's cool. So anyway, (laughs) I gathered from that, you know, that Cleveland was a real interesting place. Uh, And uh, the the bullpen had a, a, a pillbox down there. It was a concrete. And it was just, it was all, you know, it was, it was built like in the twenties or thirties or something. And, you know, all they did was pour concrete into this place and they kept pouring and pouring and pouring and didn't stop, you know? And, <laughs> uh, but so they had this it's, pillbox down there and it's great because the night that we, the night that uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you about, we really needed that pillbox. So we're on the opposite side. We're on the third base side. The bullpen's on the first base side, right, bo- right above, uh, Cleveland's, uh, dugout about, oh, 65, 70 feet or so, somewhere in there. But we're catty corner from the, from 
our, our dugout. So they can see us, we can see them, which is kind of bad sometimes. <laughs> Cause I, I was always trading, uh, you know, balls for dogs all the time, you know, and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, we, we come down to seventh inning and want to get somebody loose and uh, has it, are there any balls left in the ball bag? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> you know, sometimes you run out of balls, you know, but, uh Anyway, we're, we're sitting over there, and we go across the field to our uh, the bullpen right before the game, and we had not been used very much in about five days. Uh, our starters had been really doing the job. Well, that night, Dennis Leonard was going to be a little bit off, and Larry Gurr was going to come in in the sixth inning, and, and I got up, and he got into trouble, and so Galen just go to pitch and coach Cove down, and he says, they get country going. So anyway, Bob Stenson's warming me up, and uh, – I'm sitting there and I'm getting heated up pretty fast, like like normal. And this bullpen must have been 20 feet high. There's no possible way you could throw a ball out of this joint, but I found one. <laughs> anyway, I'm sitting there getting loose, and uh, it's close quarters anyway. And these fans are just hanging over the rail, head beers and everything. It's packed, and for sure, <clears throat> I threw a pitch. It slipped out of my hands, just like there was goose shit on my fingers or something. And <laughs> It just went. It just went flying. I mean, over the wall, over the guy's head out there. That you know, all these guys having beers. It was like there was a loose scud missile up there somewhere. <laughs> and so Stinson, he lifts his mask up and he starts, you know, grinning and laughing at me. He throws both of his hands up. What happened? It's like shit. I don't know. Five seconds later, our bullpen's getting, you know, just bombarded. You know, like parachutes of beer and hot dogs and everything, and, and popcorn and everything else. And there's, it's getting filled up about, I mean, really quick. And so we all had to dive into the pillbox right there. And so, well, Galen comes down and says, what the hell's going on down there? He says, well, and Doug Bird answered the phone. He says, well, I think country let go of the ball and it went, it went, it went up in the fans and must've hit somebody. He said, no shit. He <laughs> said, well, is country ready? And he said, Hey country, you ready? And I said, yeah, I'm ready. Shit. He said, because you can't use the pen because everything, everybody's just still throwing stuff down. You know? So I guess somebody <laughs> got drilled. And uh, sure enough, you know, two minutes later, Whitey calls down. Whitey never calls down to the bullpen. He said, Bertie answers. He said, Bertie, what the hell is going on? He said, I guess country drilled somebody down here. He says, put country on. And so Whitey says, hey, hey, you, uh, Ed, you loose? And I said, yeah, I'm loose. He said, uh, hey, uh, okay, I tell you what, uh, when I go out there and I touch that third baseline, you think you can jump that fence? And I said, yeah. He said, well, your key is when I hit the third baseline, you jump that fence and don't stop and don't stop at the gate. Jump the fence and go on out to the mound. I said, I got you. So anyway, <laughs> Whitey comes out about a minute later to get, you know, a girl off the mound, and I come into the game. And sure enough, these fans are all standing over there. There's probably 20,000 still standing. They're not setting. They're standing. You know, uh, the whole right field side is. Anyway, I, I make it out there, and I, I mean, I got pelted a little bit. So I, I go out to the mound, and Whitey's standing there with his commander stance. He's got his hands in his pocket in the front, and he's, he's chewing. He's kind of snickering. He said, now, what the hell did you do to get us all in this kind of shit? And I said, well, I, I, it's like I had goose, goose shit on my fingers, and the damn ball just sailing up there, and I guess I must drill somebody. And sure, and sure enough, you know, I looked up in the stand, and there's Gurney up there carrying somebody out, you know? <laughs> So, you know, he says, he says, you know, get us off the field. I said, no problem. See you later. So, you know, him and Buck were out there, Buck Martinez, you know, and Buck was laughing too. You know, of course, right now when I'm taking my warm up pitches, you know, the, the stands are starting to move and start, start to stand up a little bit as to the, and they keep moving toward they're, they're, what they're doing is they're spreading the word they're saying you know there's a there's an asshole on the mound out there he just drilled something <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it, it's louder and shit you know i'm just kind of snickering you know so i get the out you know i come in and galen says to me since i had much work he said country you want another inning i said hell yeah why not? <laughs> <laughs> so we go i go back out there you know after the you know, we don't score. I go back out. You know, I get I get a three up, three down inning. That's, that's cool. But you know what? It's warming up again. Now it's like three quarters of the stadium. There's an asshole on the mound out there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it was worse. <laughs> so anyway, you know, 
I, I had some stuff thrown at me, I guess, from the dugout when I was coming into the dugout. It, it, it reached the box seat, you know, that I was, hey, there's the asshole. So, anyway, I, I go up, and there's, it's in the eighth inning, and so I, I take my uniform up, and I go up the runway and take my uniform off, and there's like three or four guys up there. And Dennis Langer's up there. Jim Wolford's up there. Jim Coburn's up there. <clears throat> and the two clubhouse guys and me. And I jerk all my stuff up, just throw it anywhere I want to throw it. And so I'm going to go grab the spread because, you know, I'm just going to start eating some of this stuff. <laughs> so I'm sitting there, and Bill Beck comes in. He's our traveling secretary. He's dressed to the hilt, you know, coat and tie and all that. And everybody's over there, and he says, and Jim Jim Colburn said, "Country, did you mean to throw that ball up in the stands?" I said, "Hell no!" So Bill Beck comes in, and he's he was up at the top, you know, and so he comes all the way down. I said, "Hey, Country, how you doing?" It's fine. He said, uh, "Hey, got a question for you." I said, "Shoot." He said, "Hey, did you mean to uh, throw that ball? Did that ball? Uh, did you mean to let that ball get away from you or something?" You know, and I said, "I said no." He said. He said, are you sure? And I said, no. He said, well, that's good enough for me. So I said, he said, let me tell you what happened. I said, yeah, go ahead. He said, well, apparently that ball hit an older lady. I said, old lady, older lady. And, you know, I, and so, and it knocked her out. And, you know, and I said, well, I had a little heat on it. I said, I had a little heat on it. <laughs> you know? And he said, he said, yeah, I did. And so that, that's who they were carrying out on the gurney. And I said, I could envision this. I'm sitting there, you know, envisioning this grandma getting in there with her grandson and just watching this game. She gets smoked and she's landing in his lap. <laughs> 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 I said, Shit. <laughs> so anyway, Bill said, Bill said to me, he says, yeah, she's, you know, yeah, I was an older lady and my boy scout and my ADD kick in at the same time you know, my Eagle Scout stuff. So I said, well, and everybody was listening to me. And I said, do you think I should think I should sign a ball for her? <laughs> <laughs> so everybody, everybody, you know, starts, they don't, they don't, they're not laughing. They're howling. In, in the <laughs> and Bill and Beck just kind of looked at me and just kind of shrugged his shoulder and walked back. <laughs> did you, did you live? She lived. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that there is. You the, did you did you actually sign a ball for her, or was that just did that just go away? No, right he went away. I said, hey, well, I wouldn't sign a ball for her. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Uh, oh I mean, boy, good old country boy. You gotta give her something. <laughs> <laughs> We want to stick a dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>